a bonus edition of Crew Equipped. We want to share our hearts with you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked all month about evangelism, and we just want to take a minute and really reach out to all of those that have been watching or who will watch this video, and we want to extend Christ to you. Um, we can't talk about evangelism and not be about it. And so we wanted to do an, a bonus edition this month and just really invite you um, to learn about the Christ that we serve. Bonus! Bonus. <laughs> he is absolutely amazing. And so um, we talked about this month how, you know, you know, one of the key things is like not letting our light be dim. And so we don't want our lights to be dim. And so we want to share with you just a little bit about us. Um, I am Minister Keisha. Um, this is Minister Noble. Um, and uh, we are the youth leaders at Faith Walk Harvest Center um, in Carpentersville, Illinois. Um, but guess what, y'all? You know, we haven't always known God. Uh, and so he changed our lives, and we want him to change yours too. Um, I remember um, encountering Jesus uh, for the first time um, as a young child. Um, and uh, the reality is, is that, you know, I heard the scripture um, that for God so loved the world that he, for, that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And when I heard it, I was like, okay, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. <laughs> but, um, and so I gave my life to Christ um, at a younger age, um, on, only under the understanding of going to heaven, not realizing that there's a whole life that God has for us to live on earth that is full of joy, full of peace, that he wants his love to sh shine um, on me and bless me and prosper me. And he wants that for you too. I um, mean, so we wanted to just take a minute and have a real like down to earth, unscripted, transparent conversation um, and invite you to know the Jesus that we serve. And so, um, Minister Noble, like, how did you, how did you, how did you get to know God? They don't want to hear about that. Okay. So, I, do, I think so, they do. No, no, no. Because, <laughs> see, you got saved at a young age and I was out there being a heathen. So, <laughs> like, I'm going to tell them what matters for them. Okay. Okay. I mean, okay. at some point, if you get on the Zoom, you're like, nah, dude, tell me what you did. I got you. But here, here's what we're going to talk about. Now, if you look at all the other religions on the planet, you look at all the other faiths, what you see is people's attempt to get to God. So they try to do all these practices in order to get holy enough or to get right enough. Uh, they make big sacrifices. They, they sacrifice even their children, and some throw their children into the river uh, like, uh, just, just in order to appease their God. Wow. Um, there's, there's bloodshed or, or all these things where people are like, you, we got to do what we got to do in order to appease these gods because there's something dark on the inside of me, and they should be mad at me because I shouldn't be forgiven. There's something about humanity that just knows about guilt, about shame, mm. about darkness. There's something in us that calls us to know about those things to where we can't shake it off. And there's also something on the inside of us that causes us to know that we need to connect with the divine. If you look throughout all of the movies that are coming out, all of the books, the children's books that, you know, even some adults are reading, one thing you'll notice is that there is a strong desire to step into the supernatural. Yeah. And so they do these hard trainings and, and they go through all these things. There are people who walk on stones of fire in order to appease their God or to step into new places of holiness. But the difference between that and the gospel, and this is what I want you to hear, is that the gospel is not man being so good that, that he gets to God, but that God is so good yeah. that he comes to man. Yeah. That man was so broken and incapable of figuring it out on his own that he desired, um, that, and, and he had these desires because it's like, I know that there's good in me, but I'm broken. I, there's, there's so much shame. And there was no man. If you look in scripture, it says there was no one who could intercede on man's behalf. And so God became the intercessor. Yeah. And showed us as an example. Gave his only begotten son. Now, what's begotten begetting? What are they talking about? I don't use the term begotten. It says a son of my same likeness. 
and understanding. He gave something so precious, the Father God, the unseen, invisible God, gave something so precious and gave him to not only show man how to live, but to die a death that, like, the death of Christ is so bad that they had to create another word for the amount of pain he went through. The word excruciating. They put the word cruce as in crucified because of the death and the suffering and the, the, the constant ridicule that he had to endure in order that man would have an opportunity, an opportunity and access to God. Think about that. That easily, he could have said, nope, if they want me, the father could have said, if they want me, they need to step right. They need to act right. They need to do right because I'm worth that. I'm holy. Mm -hmm. I am judge. I created this world. I can destroy this world. They need to work. But he said, nope, they can't get it together, but I love them. Yeah. And so he put together a plan of salvation for us that caused him to give the very best to us that not only died a terrible death but was resurrected death could not hold him nope. because he was so righteous and there was no reason that that within the law of the earth it could it, it had to break the boundaries through a man through a, a, um, a man who was so connected and so God became man and he ascended. And when he did that for himself as a representative, he did that for us. Yeah. He did that for those who would follow after him. That no longer would I have to get all of my ducks in a row. No longer would I have to figure it all out on my own. But now I can come to Christ and be, I can come to the Father and be like, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' stead, in his, re in his reputation, I can come and talk to you. God is not afraid of your sin. There are so many people yeah. who are like, they don't want to come to church because they're like, well, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the place would burn up if I step in there. God is not afraid of your sin. He took care of it on yeah. the cross. Yep. And so he's asking you for the opportunity to step into that thing. Step into it. It's already paid for. The table is set. All they're waiting for is you. And so if you hear me now, if you're seeing me, I don't know how I got to you, um, but if you're seeing me right now, yeah, I want yeah. you to know that there is an all-powerful God who is also all-knowing and yet loves you. Yeah. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you're doing. I know that he loves you. And not only does he love you where you're at, he loves the real you that you don't even know. And he'd like to introduce you to who you really are. And that can only happen by getting to know him. So yeah, I could tell my testimony. I could be like, yeah, you know, I grew up in the Bronx and I'll go to church, but I was still out there being a heathen. Like I could talk about that a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But I think what's most important is that we lift up the name of Jesus Christ and Facts. you make the decision. Facts. Now, the fact of the matter is I gave you a decision. Like you can no longer go back. Now, now that you've heard this, I would suggest if you're listening to me, that you scroll up, get out of here now. Because you're already going to be judged for what I've already said to you. Oh, God. All right? <laughs> but right now, you have no excuse not to turn to a loving God. There's nothing you can say. He loves you. He breaks addictions. He breaks open the captive doors for you. And so you have that opportunity. And so I'm saying you need to take it. Forget about me. You'll probably forget my name. You'll probably forget the name of this ministry. You'll forget the name of my wife. You'll forget uh, this day. But what you need to remember is that there is a God that loves you. And that's what matters to me. Yeah. That's what should matter to you. Well, I don't think there's nothing left to be said after that. Uh, but I could say something. I'm just playing. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, we genuinely wanted to just have a transparent moment, a real moment, and connect with you and introduce you to the love of God and to a Savior that loves you. And if that is you, if you have, you know, 
if this has touched you in any, any way, the Bible says if you, be, if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart um, that Jesus um, Christ rose from the dead and he saved you, that you're safe. Like, it's really simple. It's not complicated. It's not really, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of the heart. And so um, we extend Christ to you. We extend Christ to you, and um, if you really, if this has touched you, and if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, um, let us know. We would love to connect with you. Um, yes. Leave us a comment. Um, you can email us at faithwalkharvest, uh, at crew at faithwalkharvestctr.org. Um, you can leave us a comment. Um, you can go on, um, our, on the web page and follow us, uh, our YouTube page. Um, but we want to connect with you. And we would love to hear about the fact that you accepted Jesus. And we would love to give you more resources because all of this Definitely. other stuff don't really matter. What matters is, is that you connect with Jesus and you know him as your Savior. Not that you know him as our Savior, but that you know him as your personal Savior. So this was our bonus edition. Bonus. Bonus for the month of May. I'm sorry. Uh, bonus! <laughs> and we love you guys so much. If you would like to connect with us on Tuesdays, um, we would love to have you. You guys know how to get in contact with us. And if you don't, if you just happen to see this video and haven't seen the rest of them, we have Zoom every Tuesday night. Um, and the information is below. So we would love for it to connect with you and we would be talking more about topics like this. But we just um, extend Jesus to you and we pray that you've accepted him today. And so, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this opportunity um, to share the gospel, God. Um, in the most simplest form, and that is that your love is real, and it crosses every boundary. It forgives sin. Um, it, it doesn't matter. It goes to the ugliest places, and it saves us, and it loves us. And so we thank you, God, that your love is real. Uh, we ask that those that have been watching on today, God, would spill your love, and they would experience yes, your love God. in a great way, um, and that they would go and tell the world about you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Until next month, come back for another awesome time in the month of June. Um, and we would love to have you. So God bless and see you later. Mm -hmm.